I am Mahmoud. Today I will talk about one aspect of my culture, which will be Azerbaijan literature. But before talking about my topic, I want to give you information about this view, the place I'm standing right now. So this is the capital city of Azerbaijan, Baku, and this is the most fascinating view in this uh, city, I can say. So the, most of the tourists that come to this city makes priority of visiting this place. And I absolutely recommend you to come visit this place at least once in your lifetime. So, uh, I can say that uh, this view is absolutely amazing. Now we can pass on to our topic. Literature is the study of human communication. It deals, of course, with great writers, from Shakespeare to Cervantes. Literature consists of writing in prose or poetry that provide entertainment and enlightenment. But it's also about more than that. Literature offers access to vibrant forms of expression and asks us to embrace new forms of thinking about the world. Now, at this context, I'm not also going to talk about Azerbaijani literature, but I will introduce literature to you in intercultural aspect. The start of the great history of literature is connected with Egyptians. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey were magnificent pieces of what they had. As you know, the Great Library of Alexandria is a sample of how they treated books and writings. Research shows that there has been perhaps roughly 100,000 books in that library. There is also another country that has the top place of the literature. This is Chinese literature that its history extends thousands of years. Because of the long-living history, Chinese literature consists of different periods. For example, the development of Chinese writing started with Chang Dynasty, and it's perhaps the golden age of Chinese literature. And we can't forget to mention that Chinese poets are magnificent and rare. Now, after the introduction, now we can talk about Azerbaijani literature. Azerbaijan literature is closely associated with Anatolian Turkish written in Persian Arabic script. The reason it needs to be mentioned because if you want to learn about any aspect of any culture, first you need to know about its historical development throughout the years. So throughout the years, uh, most of its uh, historical development uh, has been uh, sharply divided into two uh, traditional parts. One of them is folk literature and the other one is written literature. Azerbaijani folk literature is an oral tradition deeply rooted in its form in Central Asian nomadic traditions. One of the greatest samples of folk literature is the Book of Dedagorgut. This epic has its roots in the Central Asian epic tradition. Its stories carry morals and values significant to the social lifestyle of the nomadic Turkic people and their pre-Islamic beliefs. The tales tell of warriors and battles and are likely grounded in the conflicts between the Oghuz and the Pechenegs and Kupchaks. In 1998, the Republic of Azerbaijan and UNESCO nominated and in 2000 celebrated the 1300th anniversary of the epic Azerbaijani legend Kitabi Dedegorgut. The sense I'm showing you right now is from the Dedegorgut movie that was filmed in 1975. <laughs> In conclusion, our folk literature not only has perfect samples, but also deep roots in Central Asia. But what about the second traditional part, the written literature? I will specifically mention one name in written literature who had magnificent poems and writings. Also, he is well known all over the world for his masterpieces. The poet I'm talking about is Nizami Genjevi. Nizami is considered the greatest romantic epic poet in Azerbaijan literature who brought a colloquial and realistic style to the Azerbaijanian epic. He was born in Genja, which is Azerbaijan's second largest city. For talking about his personal arts, uh, we have to mention that he wasn't just a poet, because he uh, was also familiar with such diverse fields as mathematics, astronomy, astrology, alchemy, medicine, and all Islamic theory and law, Iranian myths and legends, history, ethics, and also other parts. This is me talking about him in front of his monument, but because it's placed in the center of the city, the noise made me mute the sound, but I will talk about them as a background noise. The reason he is at the top of the poets is his wonderful work, which is Khamsa. Khamsa is a set of five long narrative poems. These are The Treasury of Mysteries, Khosrov and Shireen, Layla and Majnun, The Book of Alexander and The Seven Beauties. Every one of these poems have their incredible story, but I'm going to talk about specific one. Name of this poem is Seven Beauties. It's the story of Bahram V, the, the Sassanid king, who was born after 20 years of childlessness. While wandering through the fabled palace, he discovers a locked room, which contains a depiction of seven princesses, hence the name Seven Beauties. 
Each of these princesses is from the seven different climes, and he falls in love with them. The king searches for the seven princesses and wins them as his brides. His architect is ordered to construct seven domes for each of these new brides. To visit, the king visits the princesses on successive days of the week. And the princesses are from completely different countries. So, uh, the first princess is from India. Also, there are princesses from China, Kharazm, Slavs, uh, the daughter of the king of Morocco, and the Iranian princess. But after the main part of the story, Bahram Gur discovers that the affairs of his country are in disarray, the treasury is empty, and the neighboring rulers are supposed to invade. After finding out that his minister is a betrayer, he puts him to death, and Bahram Gur restores justice and orders the seven pleasure domes to be converted to fire dem temples for the pleasure of God. As a result, Nizami is known all over the world, and there are also monuments of him in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Kiev, Beijing, Tashkent, Marnoli, which is placed in Georgia, and Rome. Thank you for listening. I hope every one of us will interfere with literature and deepen our knowledge.